with another hour of insensitivity training with Glenn Woods. And since it is a official Thursday afternoon, that means, of course, we head on down to Wyoming Liberty Group, which is in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And Maureen Bader is hanging on the phone. Okay, I wasn't going to admit this, Maureen, but I took a little survey there in the front office. Maureen, you sent me notes so I wouldn't get off topic and get you off topic and maybe off into other little, you know, tangents and sometimes that I get onto. And I asked if I should be insulted, and they said, absolutely not. Stick to the notes. Fantastic. That, that, that's it. So you have the full support of the staff in the front office when you're sending me this kind of information. So, okay. Yeah, well, they know me, right? Oh, do, oh, they know me, too. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's how I have to go past <laughs> that. All right. So we're heading to, actually, the Capitol building. For those people who don't, I don't care what state you're in, because there are several states around the country that are getting their capitals renovated right now. And Cheyenne, Wyoming is one of those capitals. And it was interesting, Maureen, because as I was taking a look at these state capitals around the, around the globe here, like let's go to Chicago, for example, they're all exactly in the same boat as what's happening in Cheyenne. So no, they recently right. had a meeting here. What, what came of it? Well, I mean, what you just said is absolutely right because in fact, Kansas just recently renovated their capital in fact use the same <laughs> this is a little bit ironic use the same construction manager that we're using here and they had what do you know cost overruns and delays and the excuse that the that the so-called design design team was was using to defend the, the construction management team or company which is called uh, JE Dunn was that oh it wasn't the fault of uh, JE Dunn that, there, that we had delays and cost overruns it was the fault of the legislators because they kept on not making decisions and as you'll see in a minute this is exactly what's happening here mm. and uh, having this what we call a scope creep problem that every single time some legislator or somebody on the committee has some sort of a uh, I'll, I'll just to put it nicely a thought. Yeah. So, <laughs> I doubt that, but go ahead. <laughs> that, that suddenly, oh, we have to implement some great, huge, new whatever, and, and the cost just astronomically goes up. And so what do you know? What we had in the meeting on Tuesday here in Cheyenne with the Capital Oversight Committee was uh, the fi finally the, uh, the admittance, basically, that the, the project is, in fact, already over budget it's okay. already over budget and we don't even have the final design diagrams yet okay so th that's the next thing i was going to ask you there so they're already over budget but have they begun construction anywhere ah uh, well now this is the tricky part okay. right because according to legislation no construction funds can be released until the uh, final design documents have been approved. So mm -hmm. the final design documents were supposed to be approved back in May. They haven't been approved. They haven't even been finalized yet. And yet, if you go to the Capitol and walk around, you'll see that some parts have been shut off, and and it would appear to anybody with eyes that, you know, those scaffoldings and all this hammering and whatnot would, would indicate that, hey, you know, uh, construction is going on. <gasps> no, no, no. Mm -hmm. That's not construction. That's deconstruction. Oh, yeah, the deconstruction phase. Okay. So yeah, well, here's what I'm, I'm trying to understand. So they're spending money now, right? Right. And and they're over budget now, but they haven't approved the final plan yet. Right. Okay. I feel much better. <laughs> so you should. Yeah. So, so during the meeting on Tuesday, so every month the Capital Oversight Committee has a um, has a meeting, and they had one on Tuesday, and I must say, it was a marathon meeting. It went for seven hours. Mm -hmm. I only stayed for uh, I only stayed for five, right? Because I, I had basically seen enough, and I kind of knew what was going to happen. And we'll talk a little bit about that later, because that is part part of what this whole scope creep business is all about. But at the beginning of the meeting, what the special assistant uh, attorney general, who's sort of the person who I, I thought was and anybody who was sort of watching this would, would have thought. His name is Michael O'Donnell. You'd think that this guy is sort of the, the liaison between the Oversight Committee and the uh, Department of Administration and Information. That's the big department in government that is, is essentially the, the, the department that manages government. So they've got HR, they've got construction management. So construction management is what is sort of managing then, <laughs> typical government, is managing then the construction manager, which mm -hmm. is this J.E. Dunn. 
Right. And and eventually, what JE done will hire contractors, it'll hire laborers, and as you can see, I mean the 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 point of responsibility, which I don't actually even know where it is, is a long ways away if it even exists from what is actually ever if it ever does start happening on the ground with with real construction. Because of course, it's not not construction now. No, no. It's, it's it's deconstruction. It deconstruction. Now, is that something you're you're being you know uh, sort of snarky about, or is that actually what they're calling it? Deconstruction. It's actually what they're calling it. Okay. I thought at first I thought they were talking about pre-construction, and I thought, well, well, whatever. But yeah. then I started reading a little bit more closely in the documentation, and no, 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 they actually call it deconstruction, not so, pre-construction. Uh, okay, so do they actually budget separately for deconstruction? Um, I, I, that's a very good question because okay. it, what they've got money coming from a number of different places. The largest place is what they call the. Um, have it written with me. Oh, what they call the. Uh, it's like the Capital Reconstruction Budget. The right. Capital Building Re Restoration Act, which was first passed in 2003, in fact. I mean, this is this has been going on for more than 10 years. At the, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's you can't. I mean, this is a good thing, right? That if the government is going to spend a lot of money, that it should set up a savings account. It should save the money in in it, and then it should use that money to to spend on whatever the project is. Of course, you got right. to then first assume that the project is actually worthwhile. Now, to say that renovating the Capitol building is worthwhile. Yes, it is worthwhile. This is a historic building. Buildings need to be renovated and, and restored. If you take a walk around the Capitol and look up at the stonework, you can see that a lot of it is crumbling. The building needs to be Yeah, prepared. I mean, even I'll say, it, you know, the last time I went there, I thought, boy, they need a little bit of work in here. I mean, so I'm not going to yeah. say they don't need the work. But there's other money. One is the State Building Commission, which is supposedly the, the place that is supposed to be managing state buildings, but it doesn't seem to have much to do with what's going on here. And then major maintenance. And that seems, that comes up every once in a while. Well, you know, this came, just came from the major maintenance fund. As though, as though, as though deconstruction has something to do with major maintenance. I mean, the whole thing, you want, you want to talk about 1984 spin mastering. This is, this is a really good place to be. But let's let's talk a little bit first about this one bill, one million dollar uh, over budget that the that the uh, building group finds itself in right now. Okay. This one million dollar uh, one one million dollar cost overrun is is like one million dollar more more than what they said they were going to do last month. So if we start with the two hundred and fifty nine million dollar price tag, the project cost has now gone to over three hundred million. Back during the May meetings, remember I said they have these meetings every month, the governor who's on the Capitol Building Restoration Oversight Committee said the maximum cost for the entire project will go no higher than $300 million. Well, we're already over that. So what caused this first and probably not last cost overrun? Stupidity. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. It's not nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> what Mike uh, O'Donnell, this fellow from the Attorney General's office, said was that the reason they're having the cost overrun now was because of a, an increase in the cost of temporary facilities. They apparently had some uh, unexpected security and audiovisual needs. So we're not even talking about cost overruns that are undoubtedly going to come at the Capitol. We're, we're talking about, or at the Herschler building, which is the, the big building just to the north of the Capitol that where all the bureaucrats are. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the temporary facilities. So recall that all the government workers in all the ones in the Capitol and some of the ones from the Herschler, plus all of the elected officials and the governor, have to move out of the Capitol and go in, and part of the Herschler building, and go into temporary space. The original budget for temporary space upgrades, so they had to upgrade this temporary space. They've, they've leased yeah. some space around, the, around town, and they're, they're upgrading it. Well, the, the original budget was $2 million. By February, that went up to $8 million. Mm -hmm. that is, and, and plus, they had to have $8.5 million of furniture, fixtures, and equipment that went up to $9 million. So even by February, the budget for temporary facilities, well, we're not even talking about repairs at the, at, the, at the Capitol, just for temporary facilities, for temporary furniture, for, for temporary stuff, what, the budget went from 10.5 to 17.1 million and has now gone to about 18.1 million, which bumps the 299 million total budget over the governor's maximum three hundred million million budget. You know, so, just I mean, uh, recently I had to drive. You know, the uh, the Petroleum uh, Society there in Casper, 
and I had to drive from Casper to Gillette, and I'm on one of the back Wyoming highways, and I'm thinking, oh, dear God, I'm never taking this highway again until they fix it. It is just completely crumbling apart. I, you know, I, I know a place where that money would be well spent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are lots of... Th this, is, this is the problem with, with politicians and bureaucrats. They just seem yeah. to think that money grows on trees, we can just spend it however, and it's not going to have any effect anywhere else. Well, but and then according to your notes that I'm supposed to be sticking to, but I'm failing miserably at, according to your notes here, so what you do when you find yourself in this kind of a mess, you immediately bring in another whole committee, right? Well, of course. Now, what, what started to happen was you, you, during this discussion on Tuesday, you could see very clearly, not like this was was new because I've been now to, to three meetings. This happens every single time where the committee is saying, well, you know, sort of what's happening and the, the people who are supposed to be managing the project are saying, well, we need you to make all these decisions. And they're saying, well, wait a minute, we didn't know about that. So, so what came up then during this meeting is that that maybe, gee, what we really need to have, this is uh, Senator Phil Nicholas from Laramie, what we really need to have is an advocate, a committee advocate, so that we can have somebody who actually is, is managing it. And I'm thinking, well, wait a second. What are all these, other, I mean, the, the room, the committee room, this is one of the 300 rooms, so it's, it's a big room. This room is packed. What, are, what, what have all these other people been doing since last for the past year, since last August, when this really started going after the last after the last session, what have all these people been doing all this time? And and there's no answer to that. And there's, well, no, there's no well, answer. No. Okay, all right. I don't care what capital you're looking at anywhere in the country. If they're trying to renovate the capital, they're all going through exactly the same thing. So I'm not just asking how does Wyoming wind up here because I think. No matter where we go, Maureen, it's the same problem. How do we wind up here? Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, I kind of had to laugh because we had uh, Senator Phil Nicholas. He's uh, quite a powerful senator in the Wyoming legislature. And he he started to, to tell the story about how the committee ended up with sort of, well, how the, the, actually the taxpayers of Wyoming have ended up in this pickle, as I call it. And he said that the committee actually started with an $80 million budget that would include fire protection and uh, essentially change the water and sewer system. Then as the project progressed, they hired an architect who told them they could, and I quote, turn this place into a palace <laughs> <laughs> costing about $120 million. That would supposedly give them museum quality. So so essentially take the, legis the the building back to its former glory from like 120 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So hmm, what do you know? The committee, is not, they're not using their money, so hey, what the heck. The committee agreed to this palace museum concept and set a new goal and budget with, that was essentially 50% higher. Nicholas said that the difficulty for him now so at this meeting on Tuesday was that they were led down the pathway. You know, somebody else, it's, it's not their fault that, that, that this thing is spiral, has spiraled out of control. Oh, no, no. They, they said they could get all they wanted, close to historic building quality, and they compared the, this project to other capital renovations, like the Kansas project that I mentioned earlier, and they expected to be some sort of top-grade thing. So we're in this mess because the committee thought it could get a palace for a mere 50% more than yeah. what is essentially a basic renovation, but it became obvious during the meeting that these pie-in-the-sky expectations were not being met. Okay, what you just said there reminded me of something. I'm trying to remember the position where it was, but there is some uh, state government that hired somebody like a diversity officer or something like that, mm -hmm. and they're paying the woman about $250,000 a year for this completely useless position. And they justify it by saying, well, what we did was we consulted other states to find out how much they're paying their diversity okay. officers. Therefore, we pay ours the same because it's competitive. So in other words, other capitals around the nation are overspending and finding themselves in the hole. So we consulted with them. Is that what you're saying? We consulted with them to find out what they're doing. And that's how we set our standards. Basically, that's right. Oh, God. That's right. But not only that, I mean, they, they, they talk to these architects who, 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 who say, oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. You know, you want, you want a palace? No problem. Oh, they don't you mind. Know. They're making money off of this. Well, absolutely. This, and this is what we get. So, 
so the, the, when they started talking about, I mean, we really got into the weeds. That's why the, the meeting lasted seven hours. Right. And the, the ceiling heights is a really good example of how, how the committee got it wrong. It, assumed that the, the, it seems that the committee uh, was assured that the ceiling heights would be returned to their original state. So, for example, if an office had a partition now in it, the renovation would take it back to what it was originally. But when the staff took that to the architect, the, the architect said, oh, no, no, we like the partition because it hides the drop-down ceiling which hides the new air conditioning and ventilation system. So obviously, dropping the ceiling to hide the HVAC, that's the heat, ventilation, and air conditioning, means that this is not a historical renovation. Right. Now, okay. I can understand that a capital is looking, of course, one that's this old as well, wants to upgrade some of the technology and add a few things, modern things that they didn't have way back then. But I don't see how, I would love to see uh, adjusting for inflation, if this is going to cost us more than the original capital building. Well, actually, the, I was talking to the governor, and there's, there apparently is a document in, that's on display in the capital somewhere. I have to go find this. And he said that the original, original building, and I can't remember the exact date now, but it was the, the late 1800s, cost over $100,000. And I said, and I said to him, hmm, it would actually really be interesting to adjust that for inflation because a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred and twenty or a hundred fifty years ago, that was a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. So. Now, didn't after that they added a couple of wings for the House and Senate after that? No, no, no. Okay. So in so part of the renovation is that Herschel building. That's the building where all the bureaucrats right. hang out. And originally what was going to happen is that they were going to move the elected officials, so the Secretary of State, the Treasurer, and the Auditor, the Attorney General, into what into a brand new what they called executive buildings. Right. Well, these elected officials lobbied hard and really hard and they managed to get themselves moved back into the Capitol. So it was kind of amusing because the executive building now no longer holds any executive, so they've stopped calling it the executive building, and they're calling it the addition now. So a really good place that they could cut, you know, cut expenditures would be to cut out this executive building. And so I went to the Senator Tony Ross, who's the president of the Senate, and I said, you know, you've got a $333 million deficit you've got to handle. You've got this school recalibration issue, and that's, that's the whole business about you know, increasing the amount of money to go to schools at the same time that all the amount of money going to schools is, is de decreasing. You've got, on top of that, declining revenues. And then I said, should you drop the construction of the executive building now that there won't be any executives there? Yeah. And he told me, oh, no, no, we still need the executive building because we want to stop leasing space around the city. But, you know, I was not the only person who thought that this would be a good way to save money because Treasurer Mark Gordon stood up and said, you know, we maybe we need to we need to stop start looking at maybe not building that because we need to start saving money someplace. I mean, he's the treasurer. He knows the kind of financial problems. We're in. No, their job is to spend money, not save money. So have you written an article about this? And if so, where do they find it? Yeah, everybody should go to wyliberty.org. And if you happen to be in Denver this weekend on Sunday at the library, it is the opening of the Pastel Society of Colorado Mile High Show, where I will have one of my paintings. I owe you a dollar. <laughs> Thanks, Maureen. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.